Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Do you sometimes have the feeling that your melodies are a bit too box standard because they stick too much to the classic melody rules of a period or sentence form? Well, today we'll figure out how to go beyond these textbook examples by analyzing a famous melody from Sergei Prokofiev's Lieutenant Kije Suite, which actually doesn't use repetitions, but still sounds well formed and highly memorable. Along the way, we'll figure out some guidelines, how to do this ourselves, and in the end, I show you my own attempts at writing such free form melodies. So, let's begin! First, let's lay some groundwork by recapitulating how the period and sentence form work. Typically, they both consist of eight bars, but depending on the tempo and meter, this also could be four or 16 bars. They also both start with a basic idea, which is two bars long. But this is where the differences begin. In a period, this basic idea is followed by a contrasting idea, which might differ in rhythm, intervals or articulation. Then in bar four, the period usually reaches an open half cadence. After this, the basic idea gets repeated, maybe in a varied form, and the last two bars consist of a closing authentic cadence which might or might not use the material of the contrasting idea again. The sentence form, on the other hand, repeats the initial idea immediately, often in a sequenced form. Then the second half speeds up the harmonic rhythm and increases the tension by fracturing the idea into smaller motifs. This part is like a small development section, which contrasts with the stagnant first half of the sentence. Then the ending often uses a half cadence, which opens up the piece to new development. Generally speaking, the period is a round and closed form, which is suitable for love themes, songs or any kind of dance movements, while the sentence is an open melody form, which is suitable for any kind of longer development, like the main theme for a film or a symphony. These models served me as a guideline for years and helped me to write better and effective melodies in a lot of circumstances. But there was this one tune by Prokofiev which always stood out to me by being so memorable and at the same time rejecting all the classic ideas of repetition. That's why I had to make a video about it and share with you how the master manages it to write an ever-changing melody that still works. It's the main theme from the movement called Troika from Sergei Prokofiev's music for the 1934 film Lieutenant Kijé. Maybe you've heard this theme already because after Lieutenant Kijé, this melody has also been used in other films, for example, Wes Anderson's 2018 film Isle of Dogs. But it has also been quoted in pop and jazz music, especially Christmas music. So let's first talk about the characteristics of this melody. The first thing that stood out to me was that the accompaniment is played in the higher register, while the melody lies below this. It's played in the resonant tenor register of the celli and the bassoons. But what gives it a special color is that it's also played by a tenor saxophone. What's also special is that the accompaniment only uses two different notes. It's a D and a fifth above it an A, which also happens to be two open strings on the violins and the violas. They then use these open strings to play a fast pizza which is a playing technique more similar to playing a guitar or a balalaika. But if the accompaniment doesn't change at all, how does this theme still give us the feeling of harmonic progression? Well, of course, the answer lies in the melody itself. Prokofiev systematically uses the main notes of the harmony he wants to imply on the strong beats of the bar. Of course, in between on the offbeats, he might also use some passing tones, but he clearly outlines a chord structure by using the harmony notes on the emphasized beats. But the most significant thing for me is that every bar of this melody has its own unique rhythm. You can see this here, where I used a simplified version of the melody, split up the bars and organized them vertically. But if the melody doesn't really use repetitions, why does it still feel so balanced and work so well? This is the question I want to answer now by taking a closer look at the principles that define this melody. The ever-changing rhythm of the melody could cause chaos, but there are some forces that structure everything in a clear way and hold the whole melody together. 
For example, you might have noticed that it's pretty simple and it's easily hummable. And this is no coincidence because Prokofiev didn't write the melody solely on its own, he based it on an old Hussar song. And in the film the melody was not only played by the orchestra, it was also sung. In terms of note values, Prokofiev restrains himself to use only three of them, which are quarters, eighth notes and dotted half notes. So there's an overall simplicity to everything, which makes the melody easily reproducible. The next principle that Prokofiev uses is a clear structure of two bar phrases. He always starts with an upbeat and then the second bar after B3 he places a little rest in order to separate the first phrase from the next one. There we have the little rest and it goes on with an upbeat. Again a little rest and so on and so forth. He uses the same principle four times in the whole melody. And no matter how much the inner rhythms might change, there's always an overarching structure of two bar phrases which keeps us oriented where we are in the melody. The next element is something that we've already talked about, because Prokofiev outlines a clear structure of chords in this melody. They might be inherent, but you can still hear them even if the melody is played without the accompaniment. For example, in the fifth bar he starts with an E and a B, and on beat 4 we get a G, which means that we have an E minor triad in this bar. In the next bar he emphasizes A, F sharp, and on the 4 the D, which means we have a D major triad in its first inversion. And then the upbeat to the next bar gives us D, B and then G on the 1, which is the G major triad. So now we successively get a chord progression going like E minor, D major in its first inversion and then G major. So when you write your own melodies, always keep the underlying chord progression that you want to convey in mind, so you will write better melodies and also have more choices for each melody note. And in the end, this will help you to guide the listeners all along the way. Another real important feature is that Prokofiev gives this melody a defined contour. Whenever you write your own melodies and you have the feeling that they wander around aimlessly, maybe try to think of an overall shape that you want to give the melody. Also, think about where the climaxes are, where's your highest note and where's your lowest note. And also, don't bring them too often, maybe only once, so they stay special. In Prokofiev's case, he starts after the upbeat on a high D. And then he walks down to an F sharp. And after two more bars, he goes even one note lower to the E, which is the lowest note in the melody. And it's no coincidence that it's happening right in the middle of the melody at the beginning of bar five. And then he slowly rises again. And in the end, we come back to the beginning high D, which closes the circle. And now the overall shape of the melody is something like this. Remember how I told you that Prokofiev doesn't use any repetitions in this melody? Well, that's only half true, to be honest. For example, if you look in the first and the sixth bar, you see that this motif is sequenced in the sixth bar. But the ending of the bar is different and it's also important to notice that in a classic period the repetition would happen in the fifth bar, so this is not the classic place to repeat something. But what's even more important is that Prokofiev uses a small fraction of this first motif, which are the two descending first steps. And he brings them again in bar 3, and the upbeat to bar 5, then again bar 5, and bar 6. So you get the gist, this secret motive is coming everywhere in this melody and it holds everything together. If you would like to do the same with your own melodies, remember this is something that doesn't come easily or only by accident. You really have to construct this note after note with the sheet music in front of you. Welcome to the zone of overinterpretation. Still remember how I told you that the overall shape of the melody is something like this? Well, let's look at the first motive in bar one. Coincidence? So, while the form of this melody is pretty independent, there are still some small characteristics that Prokofiev borrowed from the classic models of period and sentence form. For example, in bar 4 and 8 we have these longer notes, which indicate a half cadence in the middle and an authentic cadence at the end. From the sentence form, Prokofiev borrows in the second half the faster harmonic rhythm. 
If I had to decide which of both models would be the basis for Prokofiev's melody, I'd say it's more of a period form because it has this classic half cadence stop in the middle and at the end the authentic cadence which comes back to the root of our key. But Prokofiev refuses to repeat the initial idea in the fifth bar. Instead he does something even simpler than the first motif. It's just quarter notes and it has a great gesture to it. If you try to come up with something that is no repetition of the basic idea, try to have something that has a gesture and that is interesting to listen to. It shouldn't only be there for the sake of not repeating the first thing. So far we've only talked about the melody itself, but what really helps to sell it in this movement is also the masterfully orchestrated accompaniment texture. Prokofiev composes an interesting and light texture, which really gives the movement a joyful feeling and a forward momentum. He does this by using idiomatic writing for all the instruments. For example, in the piano he uses a pattern of alternating hands, which results in fast-paced sixteenth notes. In the strings we've already talked about the balalaika pizzicato, then we also have a harp, and of course, because in the movie a fast sleigh ride is shown, we need some sleigh bells and other percussion. Prokofiev is pretty aware that the theme that has no real repetitions in it has a high density of information, and that's not easy to process for a listener at first sight. So what he does is he uses this theme more than five times in the whole movement. What he also does is he alternates this high density information freeform theme with other themes that use lots of repetitions. To sum this up, Prokofiev doesn't throw all the rules out of the window immediately. He's still aware that repetition plays an important role in a memorable movement, but he doesn't restrain himself to the classic rules of repetition from a period or a sentence form. Instead, he uses them freely. And the principles that he uses for his own melody are actually the same for any good melody. These rules for memorable tunes are make it simple, maybe even to the point that it's easily singable, give it a constant phrasing structure to orient your listeners, and also outline a clear chord progression with your melody. It should also work if you just listen to it on its own. And in the end, you should also give your melodies a clear contour or shape in order to have defined climaxes and also orient your listeners. That being said, let's try to compose such no repetition melodies ourselves. Something that will help you with this is to write your melody in smaller chunks and maybe also notate it. This will give you a good overview which rhythmic models were already used and help you to make conscious and not only intuitive decisions. In order not to copy Prokofiev's work completely, I've decided to change some major parameters. For example, I've tried to write in another key, maybe in minor, or even in another tempo or meter. So without further ado, here's the first example. You can see this melody is going for a complete different emotion than Prokofiev's does. But it works with the same principles. It has a melody that's lying below the accompaniment, it has a clear contour which goes down, it uses just a few note values, and it still has a coherence to it because it follows the rules of simplicity, contour, and underlying harmonies. In bar 5 and 6 we have a hidden sequence. You can see that there's a rising fifth in bar 5 and in bar 6 this goes down one step. In bar 2 we can see two half notes, which at least for me sounds a little bit too simple on a piano. But if I now play the same tune for you in an orchestrated version, you can hear that these longer notes help the instruments really to resonate and have a bright tone. And now let's hear the second example where I tried to come closer to Prokofiev's melody by using an accompaniment only with an open fifth.
Of course, there are some differences. For example, this melody is in a minor key. It's written in C minor, and it also uses another time signature, which is 2-4. But there are also similarities. For example, I've really used only three note values, eighth notes, sixteenth note, and quarter notes. The other similarity to Prokofiev is that I used the lowest note in the fifth bar, where I also use slower note values, which sounds great with sustained instruments like in the example before. And I also want to point out that in the orchestrated version, the accompaniment has no slabels in it, but I still try to mimic the texture of Prokofiev, so this could fit into a movie, maybe like an adventure movie, or maybe a fantasy film. So that's it for today. I really hope I could give you some useful guidelines to write better melodies that don't only stick to the old textbook rules. And don't get me wrong, repetitions are not bad in any way. They are a useful formal device for all of us composers, but they shouldn't be the only one. Also keep in mind that we were talking about quite an advanced technique to write melodies, which might be easy for Sergei Prokofiev, but in my opinion, you should be able to write a proper good tune in a period form first before you can move on to more advanced techniques like this one. But that being said, I'd be really interested in listening to some of your own attempts in writing such freeform melodies. Maybe there's a chance that I can hear some of them. Just have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.